you know, the fans that, that follow the website mm -hmm. and that really don't know Paul Muentello, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and your career so far? Because, I mean, you've had a yeah. pretty nice little career. Well, it's not nice. It's been a rough career. You know, I mean, Paul Muentello, I go by the, the nickname Headhunter because, you know, I like to throw punches, like to knock people out. I don't got the cauliflower ears or anything like that. I don't like to do the grappling thing. But uh, it's necessary nowadays. Um, been doing the sport now, going on 14 years. You know, I started back when uh, when I fights were happening in the bull ring. You know, there's still dirts on the floor, and you know, like a rodeo just happened, and then they'll just throw in a ring in the middle, and they just pick out who you want to fight, and you either got paid 500 bucks or a dollar to lose. You know, um, first fight was with the guy that had a little experience. My second fight ever was when I fought. Uh, my second fight when I first started was with uh, Dan Severn. Dan Severn was, uh, I think, the ultimate ultimate champion back then when he was fighting UFC. You know, he was my second fight ever. And you know, then, you know, I fought a couple of tournaments, fought Evan Tanner, you know, just, and I saw the UFC on TV and I thought, man, I can do that. You know, I'd probably be there in six, seven months. And it took me eight years to get to uh, the UFC. UFC 51 was my first triumph. You know, it was supposed to be UFC 50, but I had some problems. I could, just couldn't do it. I, I, I felt that I wasn't ready for UFC 50. And then uh, UFC 51 came along, jumped right in it, had a great success. And UFC 51 had a great knockout. A lot of people remember because I uh, fought Justin Eilers. And when I hit him with the right hand, he fell like, you know, Ric Flair, he kind of felt really funny. I think it's in the UFC Knockout 1, Volume 1, something like that. And, then, you know, I had a, had a four-fight deal with the UFC, fought uh, Kevin Jordan, my second fight. Then I fought for the title, fought um, Andre Lasky, was way, way too aggressive. You know, UFC 55, you'll probably see my, my mug shot on the uh, DVD, cable, DVD player, the DVD, uh, the, the cart, so don't buy it. I can just tell you a quick story. I just ran right into a right hand and got knocked out, so... And then I came back, fought uh, Gilbert Adana, UFC 50, 57. I had a great match. Then I left the UFC, went to Strike Force. And, you know, now I went back to the UFC after, went to Strike Force, Affliction, back to UFC. Uh, last UFC I fought was 107. So, you know, my first fight was 51. Then I came back at 50, 107. And right now, currently, you know, I got released from the UFC, trying to get the way back to the top. Basically, in the minor leagues right now, I kind of fight whatever show comes up. Got to get back on the win, win streak. I just fought two weeks ago in Dominican Republic for uh, Nemesis Promotions down in Dominican, Dominican, right there by Haiti. Great show. Fought Kerry Shaw. You know, as I see, I broke my hand first round in the first minute, but I kept on fighting the whole 15 minutes. Had to start jabbing and leg kicking and defend his takedowns and stuff like that. But uh, won the fight. You know, looks I'll be injured till probably end of January, probably February 20th. Back in uh, another fight again with uh, Shark Fights, which is located in my hometown, Amarillo, Texas. And just gotta get back on that horse and get on the winning streak and get back to the UFC. That's all goal. That's all goal. You know, I I've been in this sport for a long time. I've been around. I, I know a lot of people. It's you know, it's 14 years of just hard work of of just showing to the fights and and just trying to get the W's and, and make ends meet. And you know, I'm gonna give it hell and get back to the UFC and. That's the main thing. I can show that I can still get back to the UFC, put on a great show, and uh, that's, that's the goal now. My, my small time goal is just get back in the UFC. I have the name. I have the fights. And just got to get in that W and get the fights back and get, on, get to the UFC again. You know, Paul, you know, um, you're 36 years old, and uh, um, usually they say the, the prime of uh, MMA fighters, you know, from 29 to about 33. How do you feel your body feels right now? Do you still feel like you're good to go? Or, I mean, you know, you got fighters like Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture that are still fighting, you know. Yeah, like you know, I, you look at that. You look at the age, but the thing is, it's in the MMA, it's your, it's your body. It's how your body can hold up. You know, most guys now at 29, 28 already have, you know, blowed out elbows or knees. You already had two or three surgeries. You know, I haven't had that problem. Knock on wood that I haven't blown out my knees or blown out my, my back. A lot of guys have back problems and just can't handle the, the, the rigorous training. And I feel good. I feel comfortable. For me, it's all mental. It's, 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 for me, it's I got to love the sport. And I love it so much that I, I want to do it. I want to have fun with it. And I think once I stop having fun with it, I can walk away. And right now, I'm kind of determined to get back to the UFC. That's fun for me because it, it's, it's something like a carrot in front of a, of a donkey. I, you know, it wants to eat. It wants to get after it. It wants that thrive. And that's what I'm looking for, just get back to the UFC and prove everybody, hey, I, I made it back, and let's have fun with it. I'm having fun with it now, and I think – and I feel I know for sure that once I'm not, I don't love the sport anymore, I'm not having fun anymore training or having fun, you know, shooting the shit with the guys, I can walk away. So age is not a concern for you. It's no. Just, it's definitely how your body feels. It's how my body feels and how mentally I am. And this last fight, you know, it was easily, my last few fights, just my head wasn't in it. You know, I had a lot of drama, a lot of, a lot of back, back and forth thinks and thoughts in my head, and I just wasn't 100% mentally. And, you know, I sat back and regrouped and, and got these stuff together and got my head right, you know, got the right train around me. 
and uh, won, started winning these fights, I could have quit that fight. You know, my hand broke within the first minute. I knew I could have stopped. And, but it, I was like, no, I need this W. I, you know, I'm gonna, I can win this fight with one hand, and I did. So just that, that's, give, that's building confidence in myself. And that's the hardest thing. As you're a fighter, you've been in so long, and you win, lose, win, lose. You lose confidence in yourself. You lose confidence in your ability. And I think I had to work on that confidence again. So once I get back to the UFC, you're gonna see, it's, it's just going to see the same old Paul that everybody used to back in the day. It's hard-hitting, very aggressive, and try to get the win. Oh, big advantage. And the thing is, the thing is that working with, with top-level wrestlers, you know, you got, you got DC, Daniel Kume was you know Olympic alternate. You know, got fourth in fourth in Olympics in Atlanta or or Be- I don't know Beijing or you know I don't know I don't know exactly. He talks so much I can't remember what the heck he said. You know, then you got Cain Velasquez, which comes off. You know, he's he's all American. Got this other kid, can't think of his name, Jason something. He's he's all American too. Really big guys. He's, all these guys are 260. You know, Daniel Cume is supposed to be a 205er, but he walks around 260. And but these guys are real fluid. And looking forward to that because it, I can put my hands on them. But can I keep their hands off me? You know, once they grab the ankles, once they grab the knees, and it's all about sparring partners. If you're not getting pushed in the gym, then you're not going to be able to get pushed in the cage. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, that's it. You know, follow me on paulbuntello.com. You know, there's always updates. Tweet me at paulbuntello, and just stay in touch. Read my tweets, read my blogs, and uh, you'll see me back pretty quick.